In this video, we are going to talk about calculating the heat of a phase change. That is, changing from a solid to a liquid, melting, changing from a liquid to a solid, which is freezing, or changing from a liquid to a gas, which is boiling, or from a gas to a liquid, which is condensing. In order to understand this fully, we're going to look at our heating and cooling curve that you have seen previously. And so that's what's in front of you right now is the heating and cooling curve. If we're adding energy, the substance temperature is going to go up, meaning we're going to go from point A through the rest of the points. And if we add enough energy, maybe all the way up to F. If we are removing heat, heat lost would be a negative sign. And we would actually be moving in the opposite direction, say from point F downward to maybe even point A if we removed enough heat. Now it's useful to look at this curve in sections. So the first thing that we're going to do is identify these two flat sections where we have them as B and C and D and E. For If this is any substance, this first flat section would be known as the melting point or the freezing point. Melting and freezing are the same thing, just depending on which direction you're going. If you're looking at section D and E, D, E, that is known as the boiling point. Now, if the substance we were dealing with were water, for water, we know our melting point is zero degrees. So for water, we would put a zero degrees Celsius here. And our boiling point for water would be 100 degrees. But it doesn't have to be water. It could be any substance that we're referring to. So I'm going to erase the actual values for now and just leave it generic in terms of melting and boiling point. What we're going to do is we're going to take this curve and split it up into sections. And you can do this in your notebook. I would copy this graph in, and I would split it up just like I am doing right now. And if you need to pause the video, you can do that to get the picture made. Then I would number each of these sections, one through five. And what we want to look at is what phase or state of matter is present in each of these sections. In section AB, or section one, that is where we are taking a solid and warming it up. So in that section, section one, we only have the solid phase present. In section two, though, it is starting to melt. So in section two, we have both solid and liquid present. In section three, it is only a liquid. In section four, we're going to start to boil it. So now what is present is both liquid and gas. And in section five, it will just be gas. Now, in our previous video, you learned a formula, which was Q. I'll write it down here. You learned this previous formula. Q equals M, mass, times delta T, temperature change, equals CP, specific heat capacity. Q is the heat. And that, that formula works great in our sections one, three, and five, because in those sections, the temperature is actually changing. However, if you look at our flat sections, sections two and four, those sections, that formula will not work for because the delta T would be zero, and it's implying anything times zero is zero. It would imply that it does not take heat to melt or boil, and we know it does. So what we're going to do is examine what formula can we use in place of the other one that we've already learned. So as I said before, in sections one, three, and five, the heat lost or the heat gained could be used, calculated by Q equals M delta T C P. In those sections, the temperature is actually changing, which means the kinetic energy is changing. But in sections two and four, energy is being absorbed in a different way. The temperature is not going up. Instead of the molecules moving faster, the molecules are either moving farther apart when being heated or closer together when being cooled. So we need two different formulas in that section. And the formula to find the heat, Q, in section two, we would use N times delta H fusion. N simply stands for the number of moles of that substance. And all of us know how to calculate moles of something. In section four, where I'm boiling the liquid, we would use Q equals N delta H vape. And I'm going to just give you brief definitions, brief definitions for each of these terms. Delta H fusion is the amount 
of heat needed to melt one mole of a substance. So, generally speaking, when we're adding heat, delta H should be a positive number. So delta H should be positive or greater than zero when we're adding heat. So that leaves us to believe that when we're taking heat away, we should change the sign of delta H to a negative. Now, delta H vaporization has almost the same definition as the one above it. It's the amount of heat needed to boil one mole of a substance. And again, the same thing is true. We'd want a positive delta H if we're adding the heat. We'd want a negative delta H if we're move, removing the heat. We just physically change the sign. We make it a negative number. Now, for water, the delta H of fusion is 6, roughly 6 kilojoules, 6.01 kilojoules per mole. But whereas delta H of vaporization is 40.67 kilojoules per mole. What that is telling us is it takes a lot more energy to boil water and change it to a gas than it does to take solid ice and melt it to liquid water. So now we're just going to practice two quick problems and then we'll be done with the video. The first one says to calculate the amount of heat needed to melt 45 grams of ice at its melting point. Now, since we're at the melting point, we are in section two of our curve. And in section two, the formula we want to use is Q equals N delta H fusion. Now N stands for the number of moles. Since what I was given was 45 grams of water, I'm going to have to first change that to moles. So one mole of water, hopefully we all know how to find the molar mass by adding it up on the periodic table, is 18.02 grams. When you take 45 divided by 18, you should get, 18.02, you should get 2.50 moles of H2O. And now we're ready to use that in our Q formula. Q is equal to N delta H of fusion. We've already calculated the number of moles as 2.50 moles. Our delta H of fusion is 6.01 kilojoules per mole. And so when you multiply those two values, you should get 15.0. Now, notice the label on this is kilojoules, and that's the final answer. If we were moving in the different state, now we're going to boil the water. I'm going to keep the same amount, so I know that, again, 45 grams of water is the same thing as 2.50 moles. But now it's asking us to calculate the heat needed to boil it. So we're going to take Q, we're going to use N, but this time, delta H will be the delta H of vaporization. We're going to use 2.50 moles. But if we look back for water, delta H of vaporization is 40.67 kilojoules per mole. Now, our answer can only have three significant digits. So if we take 2.50 times 40.67, with three sig digs, we get 102 kilojoules. So if you look back, it takes 102 kilojoules to boil the water, but it only took 15 kilojoules to get that water to melt. So hopefully now you feel pretty comfortable calculating the heat in a phase change.